maintenant au tour de Hakeb Hassan, étudiant à la maîtrise. Hello everyone, my name is Akif Hassan and I'm going to present about the biodiversity in Escar Lakes. This project has been supervised by Professor Miguel, Professor Guillaume and Professor Louis. First, let me, de let me define what is Escar. Escars are complex geological formation that was created during the last ice age, which happened around 10,000 years ago. During that time, 97% of Canada was covered in thick layer of ice. The thickness of ice was up to two kilometers in several places, and uh, deep under this ice cover, with a linear accumulation of layers of sand and gravel, escar is formed. Now, these escar are distributed over all northern countries, including Canada. The lakes on Esker are different than typical boreal lakes because these Eskers are connected, sometimes connected with the groundwater system and they are not connected with other river system or other wetlands. And this type of habitat actually makes them as closed basin wetland. And this relationship also affects the water temperature, water quality or nutrient. Eskers also provide several services. For example, Esker provides sand and gravel, which is used for construction purposes. Eskers also provide one of the best fresh quality fresh water in the world. Esker, microtourism in Eskar ecosystem is very popular. Eskers also provide uh, opportunities for archaeological sites and recreational sites. Also, Eskers provide the productive jack pine timber. Due to these services, Eskar face several threat. Uh, the main threat Eskar face is the over extraction of sand and gravel, which actually altered the natural bedrock of Eskar ecosystem. Also, forest harvesting has negative impact over the biodiversity and other anthropology disturbance such as camping, species introduction also can have negative impact over biodiversity. And there is a huge knowledge gap about the biodiversity and functioning of Eskar ecosystem. And to eliminate that knowledge gap, we're implementing a unique food web approach. Water birds act as a top predator in Eskar lakes, but they are just the tip of the iceberg because their uh, population depends on to other things that feeding resources such as macrium bird community and fish community. Therefore, we developed two study uh, to understand the biodiversity and uh, what, is, uh, what, what is the threat for the biodiversity. The objective of our first article is to evaluate the water bird, fish and macrium bird biodiversity as well to escalate lakes and also identify its environmental drivers. And to do so, we are using the food web approach. There are 80 lakes selected around the territory of MRC IBTB. And among those 80 lakes, depending on the size of the lake, location of the lake, and logistic, we selected 50 lakes. Here you can see all the 50 lakes from MRC IBTB. And among these 50 lakes, 25 lakes were situated in Eskers and 25 lakes situated on the clay belt. For water bird, we use point count and flash count method. For fish, we set three minnow traps per lake and we kept the trap for 24 hours. Then we identified each fish species and measured them. For macrium bird, we collected the macrium bird sample from each lake uh, with a D-frame net. We also measured some physiochemical and environmental variables. We also characterized the physical and biophysical environment of, for each lake. Now the results. So we found the Shan virus index value is lower in Eskar Lake compared to the lakes on clay. For fish, there was a significant difference. In Eskar Lake, they had very low amount of fish. The diversity was very low in Eskar Lakes. For macrium vertebrate, there wasn't a significant difference. However, mean Shan virus index value is slightly lower in Eskar Lake. For physical variables, Eskal Lake had lower uh, amount of total dissolved phosphorus and total dissolved nitrogen and dissolved organic carbon uh, compared to the lakes on clay. However, they had very high dissolved oxygen saturation in Eskal Lakes. We found that there is a negative effect of harvesting distance over the water but richness with our GLM model. We also measured the indicator species from Esker Lakes. We found the strong association of common golden eye and Canada goose uh, on Esker Lakes. We also found the strong association of yellow perch on Esker Lakes. And for macrium party bed, we found the strong association of stoneflies and damson flies on Esker Lakes. Now the discussion. 
Eskal Lake had lower water bird resistance and diversity. However, few water bird species showed strong association with these lakes. For example, common golden eye. Common golden eye specifically prefer fish lakes in Eskal Lake because uh, when, in summer, when they rear the ducklings, they prefer fish lakes in Eskal Lake because they don't like competition with uh, fish because fish and, fish and water bird both uh, feed on macrine vertebrate. Uh, so they don't like competition during that time. For fish, the diversity of fish in Eskal Lakes were very low. Half of the Eskal Lake uh, ha didn't have any fish. Isolation of Eskal Lakes and their lower nutrient content can, uh, can explain the absence of fish in fishless Eskal Lakes. However, accidental or maybe intentional fish introduction can explain Eskal Lakes with fish. For macrine vertebrate, the significant association of stone flies in Eskal Lakes can be explained by the fact that they require more dissolved oxygen in the water to survive. Uh, dragonfly dams flies uh, also uh, showed a st uh, strong association in Eskal Lake because with the absence of fish, they act as a predator in this type of lakes. So to conclude, we can say that the diversity of Eskal Lakes is lower in all tropic level of the food web. However, few important takes are showed a strong association with Eskal Lakes uh, because they need this special ecosystem to survive. However, anthropogenic activity might alter this pristine Eskal ecosystem. But how? Let's find out more with our second article. The objective of our second article is to evaluate the impact of anthropogenic disturbance on biological diversity and also abiotic factor of Eskal Lakes. Here's all the 50 lakes that we studied, but here we divided the Eskar lakes into different sections with, with the presence and absence of fish. Here, 13 Eskar lakes were with fish and 12 Eskar lakes were without fish and uh, 25 boreal lakes on the clay belt. For this study, we also measured the disturbance index where uh, one means less or not disturbed lake, and five means the most disturbed, depending on five criteria. Uh, whether the lake has excess um, or uh, any signs of recreational activity, or harvesting within 100 meters from the lake, uh, or agricultural activity within 100 meters from the lake. Also, presence uh, of summer house or temporary residential, uh, sorry, recreational vehicle, leaving at least a month around the lake. Now the results. So we found the nutrient concentration was a very local, significantly lower in Eskar lakes that didn't have any fish. Diesel organic carbon was significantly low even when the Eskar lake didn't have any fish. Here I, I, I'm gonna show you the abundance uh, or is like Abundance with the disturbance. Here, x-axis, you can see the water bird abundance, fish abundance, and macro abundance. And in the x-axis, there is this is the disturbance index, while higher value is the host. So we found that with disturbance, macro and water bird abundance decreases. However, with disturbance, fish abundance increases. Here is our model. We found uh, there is effect of disturbance index and elevation over the biological communities. So now discussion. The major anthropogenic effect the Esker uh, habitat face is recreational pollution, sedimentation, and this comes from mainly from harvesting, eutrophication, and species introduction. Forest harvesting uh, or other anthropogenic disturbances can increase the dissolved organic carbon in Eskar lakes. Recreational activities, including fishing, boating, camping, close to Eskar lakes can be re uh, responsible for species introduction that ultimately modify the whole ecosystem of Eskar lakes. So what could be the solution? We recommend adoption of partial cut in Eskar lakes because partial cut can, uh, can implement a refuse habitat for the biodiversity that need to some place to survive. We also recommend responsible tourism in Eskar lakes. Please don't put fish in fishless Eskar lakes because presence of fish can modify the whole ecosystem and whole food web. 
And we also recommend the conservation of ESCAR ecosystem by declaring it as a protected area for better conservation of this unique ecosystem. I want to thank everyone that has contributed for my beautiful projects. I also thank you everyone for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Akib.